We all want more freedom, and a lot of us work hard now in the hope we'll feel free later. What if there was another way? A way to feel happier, more free, and confident to get better results right now. Welcome to Your Freedom Unlimited, where we share practical stories and strategies to help you show up authentically, drop your fears, and take inspired action on what matters most to you. I'm your host, Jen Ramsey. As a coach with a love for metaphysics, science, spirituality, and strategies that get results, I'll help you step away from self-doubt and create a powerful new story for your life, business, or career. Join me. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Your Freedom Unlimited with me, Jen Ramsey. Thank you so much for spending your time here with me on this podcast. I really appreciate it. So this week, what are we talking about? Well, this week is all about how to change the negative stories you are telling yourself. There is a lot to cover here. So this is going to be part one of a two part episode. And both of these episodes follow on from episode 11 where I asked you one of the most important questions I have ever asked myself, which was, what type of stories are you telling yourself about yourself and your life? Just in case you missed episode 11, I'll just quickly explain this, and then you can go back and listen to episode 11 in more detail if you'd like. But what do I mean by this? What do I mean when I ask, what type of stories are you telling yourself about yourself and your life? Well, the fact is, is that every day of our lives, we are telling ourselves thousands of stories about ourselves and our lives and others and how others are interacting in our lives. There's all sorts of stories going on. And these stories can be very simple stories. So if, you know, if it's a sunny day, you'll feel like it's going to be a great day because it's sunny. Or if you wake up and it's a cloudy, rainy day, then that's got a chance of being a miserable day. So they're the sort of simple stories that we can tell ourselves. But then there can be incredibly complex stories that we tell ourselves. Things like, well, I'm not good enough for that job because I don't have the right degree or qualifications or experience. Or stories like, well, I'm not good at relationships because I've had bad experiences before. Do any of these ring any bells with you? I know they do with me and I have told myself so many stories over the years and I can see now the impact of those stories on my life. So why am I talking about all of this and why is this so important? Well, it's just that because the stories we tell ourselves will have a huge bearing on our lives. And I'm going so far as to say that they determine whether or not we feel happy, confident, and free within ourselves, or if we feel that our life is quite difficult and if we can feel quite, you know, that we, we are always encountering difficulties. It's always because it comes down to these stories that we tell ourselves. Now, I do explain a lot more of this in a lot more detail in episode 11, but to just give you a quick nutshell review of all of this, I think there are four reasons that these stories have such a huge bearing on our lives. The first one is, is that our stories carry a lot of emotional energy and this emotional energy almost creates an, an automatic reaction that can determine our thoughts, our actions and our behaviors. So just think for a moment, if someone toots you in traffic or cuts you off in traffic, where are you and where do most of us almost automatically go? We go back into a reflex response of, you know, you can't speak to me like that. and various other things that I won't go into right now, but we typically have a negative reaction as soon as we get someone cutting us off in traffic. So that's the first reason. The second one is that our stories can really trap us and rob us of opportunities. So for many years, I told myself I wasn't good at art. And the question with that was how many opportunities was I missing out on? And I did used to tell myself that, but a, few years ago, but a few years ago, I started painting. I actually even started exhibiting my pictures and I've even sold a couple of them. But one thing that really sticks in my memory is actually a conversation that I had with my dad just last week. 
I've, I had painted a picture of him when we went horse riding in the snowy mountains on a family trip a few years ago. And he said to me just last week, he said, Jen, I love that picture because it reminds me of that wonderful family trip we had together. So every time he's looking at it, it's not just a painting for him, but it's a very happy memory of some great family times. And it really was an amazing trip. If you ever want to do something really fabulous, go horse riding in the snowy mountains um, in, in Australia. It is just so beautiful. But anyway, I digress. But I guess the, the, the thing with this whole story that I'm sharing here is that it is really lucky that I didn't buy into that story of not good enough with my art, or I would have robbed my dad of that enjoyment of some great memories. The third reason that our stories can be so dangerous is that we can slip into autopilot, into, society, into the stories that we are sort of conditioned into in our society. So we can get very much caught up in what society says is right and how we should behave versus what perhaps is most important to us. So my interview with Jay Rothman on episode three, where he explains how his pursuit of the American dream really didn't lead him to a great life is a perfect example of that. He'd gone into autopilot thinking that this is what he should do. And he wound up in his late forties and early fifties, really very unwell and questioning everything about his life, all because he'd gone into autopilot. So the fourth reason that we need to be very careful of the kind of stories that we tell ourselves is that the kind of story we tell ourselves about one situation could be repeated in many other situations throughout our lives. And a really good example of this is a story I told myself as a child about my ability to do maths and sport. I do talk more about this in episode 11, but what I found was that those patterns of not good enough in relation to maths and sport repeated throughout my adult life. And, and it happened, it, they just repeated and repeated and repeated until I actually got conscious enough to do something about them. And I guess another reason we have to get really super conscious about the stories we tell ourselves is that very often in our stories, we become a victim to some other situation, person or circumstance. So we have to be really well aware of that. So I'll let you go back and listen to episode 11 to really dive into this whole reasoning in terms of why our stories are so important. But today's episode, I want to share with you, well, what do we do about this? How do we change the negative stories that we're telling ourselves? There are quite a few steps here, so I'm going to share with you the first five here today and then the rest in my episode, my part two episode next week. So how do we change these negative stories that we tell us ourselves? Our first step is to become aware of our stories. Just becoming aware of our stories is an amazing first step. This simple awareness will definitely help reduce their impact on your life. Einstein said once that a problem well stated is a problem half solved. And I completely agree with him. Once we become aware, then we can do something about it. So my tip for you here is to, to start to pay attention to your inner dialogue. What exactly are you saying to yourself about yourself? What are you saying to yourself about your life? And what are you saying about others and how they are treating you? And it's real, these, are, these stories are everywhere. So just really think about what you might be saying to yourself. Step two is about understanding we are telling ourselves stories that don't serve us. So even though those stories might be stories you have told yourself for a very long time, and even though they may feel like a very comfortable old pair of shoes that you could walk about in forever, that comfort factor is not necessarily serving you. Just like those shoes that go beyond the point of no repair, if we stay in our comfort zone of our old story, we are simply not growing or expanding. And in fact, we can actually start to contract and go backwards. This is what I'm talking about here is if we stay, if we're fearful of moving on or fearful of trying something different, we're staying in that comfort zone, but we're not expanding. We're not doing what we were, our purpose in life was just really to expand and try new things. And I guess the truth is here, we are all running stories in our lives that are no longer serving us. Some again are simple and some are more complex. When I was thinking about 
one, one I was thinking about the other day was um, thinking about food that I might have avoided, you know, as a child. And that was me and kiwi fruit. Um, I avoided, I've avoided kiwi fruit most of my adult life because as a child, I didn't like how the seeds in the kiwi fruit felt in my teeth. <laughs> but now I've, I've, you know, I've done some reading and people have told me, you know, just how great kiwi fruit are for you. They're full of vitamin C and fiber. And, you know, I read an article that, that even says they help you with your sleep. Anything that helps you with your sleep is a great thing. So I tried one last week and I was like, oh, I've been missing out so long on this great fruit. And I've been avoiding them all because of that memory I had of a child of not liking the seeds in my teeth. So that's a story that simply has not served me for a very long time. And we can do a lot of this around food. Um, another thing that we can do is sometimes go on eating food that might not make us feel as good, but we keep on eating it. I remember my beautiful Aunt May, she had, um, she, she had been, um, un she'd been unwell for quite a while, just not terribly unwell, but just didn't feel very well a lot of the time. And finally she went to the doctor and said, look, we need to do something about this. And the doctor um, did some tests and realized that she had celiac disease. And as soon as she stopped eating those foods that didn't serve her, she felt completely different. So sometimes even the food we're eating might make us feel good in one way, but it might not be serving us. That's all about food. But if we think about other areas in our lives, um, maybe you've stayed in a job for too long because it was comfortable or because then you, you knew the people or because you felt you had the expertise, but then you realized later sometime down the track, it was no good for you. So these are things we can often do. So I guess this second step is all about just understanding that sometimes those stories or those habits that we fall into just aren't serving us. Now, you might be asking me right now, well, well, if we know that something is no good for us, why do we keep doing it? Well, that's coming back to some of the brain science. It's ironic, but it's because of how our brains are wired. Our brains are wired to always take the easiest course of action, to literally conserve energy. So what that means is we can stay very comfortable in our comfort zone for way too long with our old stories, rather than trying a new one on for size, simply because our brains want to keep us, keep, you know, keep things easy for us and conserve some energy. And, you know, what comes to mind at the moment is that saying, you know, no pain, no gain. And I'm not really a fan of that, but I am a fan of trying things, new things on for size and for pushing past your fears, because I know that's really where lots of exciting things can happen. So this is about understanding that you know, some of the stories that we tell ourselves might not be serving us. And if we can understand some of the neuroscience and say, okay, let's just try something here. Let's try something different, push past the fear, push past that easy wiring that the brain's trying to do. We can, some, we could come into something much more interesting. Now, the third, third step in turning all of this around for ourselves is to be extremely kind and compassionate with ourselves when we suddenly realize that maybe the stories we've been telling ourselves are not that great. There is really nothing to be gained by beating yourself up. This is really a lot more wasted and negative energy. And I really want to encourage you in this podcast to really understand that you have this incredible energy source within you and you've got a real choice about how you use that energy source. You either use it for good or as they say, for evil. So we want you to always be, I want you always to be focusing on your energy and focusing it in a way that's supporting you. So beating yourself up is not a supportive use of energy. And I remember my mother saying to me, you know, there's no point crying over spilt milk. And boy, was she right. I've found that being annoyed or frustrated or sad just puts me into more victimhood. So this is another great time to be practicing self-kindness. Our fourth step in turning all of this around is to fully realize you are the creator of everything in your reality. Now, I know I've spoken about this before on this podcast, but it's just such a central philosophy for living life that I just wanted to share it with you again here now. And it is really vital to turn these stories around. And why is that? Because it completely takes you out of victimhood in every single one of your stories. 
When you realize you are the creator of your own reality, it means that you are fully responsible for everything in your life. And what does that mean? It means that if we can create our reality, we can make a change to it. And this idea is incredibly liberating. I certainly know it was for me. And when I was thinking about creating this podcast and calling it Your Freedom Unlimited, this is exactly what I was talking about. You can create your reality. You can make a change. And it, you are the one who's in the driver's seat of your life. So you may be thinking, oh, it's a little bit scary if you realize everything comes down to you. But I've found the benefits are so huge that when you start putting this into practice, that once you start, you'll never look back because everything can literally change in your life. Just an example of how we can create our own reality. I wanted to share with you a story um, from quite a few years ago when I started to facilitate corporate workshops. I was training people in communication and leadership and team building, and I loved it. And some of these workshops were four day events where you really got to know the people and they got to know you. We had run several of these events and my clients loved them and they were booking repeat events. And then in one of these events, all of a sudden and out of the blue, I received really bad feedback from about four of the 25 participants. And I need to tell you, at that time, I was mortified and I was shocked and I was frankly quite devastated. And I felt a complete victim because the story I'd told myself was that I'd done my best and also that was sort of the top line story. And then the underlying story underneath the top line story was that my work success determined a very large part of my self-worth and value in the world. Looking back, I realized actually it was the best thing that could ever have happened. I had completely created the whole situation. In the short term, I got some great feedback that made me a much, much better facilitator. And I got it earlier on in my facilitation career so I could really work with that. And then in the longer term, I realized that the situation was completely created by me to give me a bigger picture realization that my self-worth is nothing to do with my performance at work or at home or anywhere. Now, I've just opened up the big self-worth question there, and uh, some might call it the self-worth can of worms. I'm gonna be talking more about that in future episodes, but for today, I just wanna talk generally about how to turn around these stories that we're telling ourselves. But, you know, this is a very key step. When we come to this realization, that we are the creator of our life, we completely step out of victimhood and we come into this amazing feeling of freedom. So step number five is really adding on to step number four. If step four was about stepping away from being a victim into, into a creator, then step five really seals the deal. So what is it? Well, step five is understanding that Everything is perfect and it's happening for us, not to us. So what this means is, is that everything in our life, every person we meet, every experience we have has a purpose. And there is a deeper meaning to ev everything, even the hardest things, if we look hard enough. Have you ever heard the saying 2020 hindsight, meaning that when we look back from a period of time, we can see why things turned out the way they did? So perhaps you might look back and realize why you took a certain job at a particular time in your life or why you started a business or perhaps why you moved to a particular place um, at a particular time or perhaps why you even chose to be in a relationship with a particular person. You'll, when you look back, you'll see some of the reasons why. And basically is that there is a deeper meaning and purpose to all of our interactions even if we're, we're from where we're sitting right now, we could find them hard to see. So just for a moment, I'd like to ask you to sit just quietly and to sit for a moment in your unlimited self. Just go into a quiet meditative space if you can, if it's safe with what you're doing right now. And just sit for a moment in your unlimited self as part of that wider consciousness that I spoke about in episode five. And if you just, Think quietly and 
go into some a meditative space you'll start to perhaps get a sense of that bigger picture and see why things are as they are so I do realize this could be a harder concept to take on so if I can just ask you to just open the door a crack to this idea at the moment and just bear with me listen to this episode again and tune in for episode the next episode of part two of this episode where I'll be sharing more about this but those are the five steps I wanted to share with you today there's a lot already that I've covered and next week I'll be sharing the last few steps in the process so for today for today what I'd like you to think about is what are the stories that you're telling yourself that you would like to turn around and just another tip don't try to overhaul all of your stories at once just is there one story in your life that if you made a turnaround on that that it would make a huge difference for you so just take one story at a time don't feel you've got to do everything but just one thing perhaps there's an area of your life that you feel perhaps maybe some sadness or maybe some discomfort or just a niggling feeling that maybe things could be better if only you could make a change that's probably where you could make a start so I also wanted to offer that if you're finding this is something quite big that you would like to dig into or if you need some help to work out what's going on in this area for you you can contact me for a discovery call to chat about what your needs are and how we could work together I'm a coach and this is what I do so I'd like to invite you if, if you feel you'd like some help with this to book a 20-minute discovery call with me at jenramsey.com forward slash discovery and it is truly a complimentary call we'll get together we'll have a chat about what it is that you're dealing with and we'll just talk about what your needs are and how we could work together and I've got something extra special to add to that right now if you'd like a free coaching session there is a way you could get a chance to get one if you're listening to this episode in August or September 2020 I'd like to invite you to an enter my competition to win a 90-minute breakthrough coaching session with me where we can really focus on you releasing your old story and I can help you start to create a new one so I'm giving away one session to get your chance to win all you need to do is subscribe and rate and review your freedom unlimited on Apple podcasts so to enter the competition all you need to do is just visit jenramsey.com forward slash win and don't worry if you've already subscribed rated and reviewed your freedom unlimited on Apple podcasts you're already in with a chance to win the competition just email proof you've done it to hello at jenramsey.com all you need to do is just email that proof and you'll be in the competition so that is all for this week I want to say thank you so much again for joining me these are the first five steps of how to turn those negative stories around stay tuned for my episode next week where I'll be sharing more with you on how you can turn these stories around once and for all so thank you so much for joining me today I really appreciate it and if you do like this podcast please share it with friends and rate and review it for your chance to win that coaching session with me this does make a difference to getting the word out there so thank you for your time and for spending your time with me today I'm looking forward to catching up with you in our next episode thank you for joining me on this episode of your freedom unlimited if you like this show please share it with a friend and if you haven't already subscribe rate and review your freedom unlimited on your favorite podcast player if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can reach me directly at jenramsey.com. Thanks for listening.